Onward to the next chapter. As the launch date for Flight 5 approaches, preparations and procedures are intensifying, promising new milestones. Meanwhile, in Europe, a rocket company faced a setback during a test with their rocket, which was anticipated to compete with SpaceX's Falcon 9, highlighting the challenges of rocket development. In contrast, Falcon 9 continues to demonstrate its superiority, securing a valuable launch contract. Now, if you're ready, let's dive into these developments on today's episode of Great SpaceX. We are already in the second half of August and September. The month Elon Musk once set for Starship Flight 5 is right around the corner. In this upcoming flight, SpaceX will attempt to land the super heavy booster using the Mechazilla arm. Recently, SpaceX took a significant step forward by receiving approval from the FCC, which posted the license on its X page. The license is valid from August 18th of 2024 to February 15th of 2025. Under the Purpose of Operations section, the agency states, Launch Vehicle Communications for Test Flight Mission Launching from Starbase, Texas. The first stage booster will either return to the launch site or perform a controlled water landing. This means that SpaceX's proposal for catching the booster with the Mechazilla arm has been initially accepted by the FCC at least. What we're still waiting on is a similar decision from the FAA. Despite the absence of a mishap investigation, the FAA has yet to make any significant progress, possibly because they're still evaluating SpaceX's new mission proposal for the next flight. As I mentioned, catching a rocket with the Mechazilla arm is an unprecedented move that will undoubtedly set SpaceX apart from the rest. As for the mission process, Starship will still launch, separate as in previous flights, with the second stage attempting to reach orbit, completing its assigned task, then re-entering and landing in the ocean. But the real difference will come from the Super Heavy booster. After separation, it will be guided back to Starbase. For this to happen smoothly, the engines and grid fins must work in perfect harmony. As the booster approaches Starbase, these systems become increasingly critical for navigation and deceleration. Once it gets closer, the chopsticks will open and the booster will slowly maneuver into position between them. The chopsticks will then close to securely hold the booster in place. A landing rail system will help stabilize the booster. Once secured, the chopsticks will rotate and, with the help of the actuator system, adjust the booster's position to align it with the orbital launch mount before finally setting it down. This is the ideal scenario we all hope to see in the next flight. However, since this is a test, success is not guaranteed. There are numerous risks involved. Engine failure could compromise deceleration, navigation errors could arise, or the chopsticks might not open and close as planned. Even the smallest mistake could lead to a catastrophic disaster, potentially destroying the launch tower, launch pad, and even the surrounding area, which includes several fuel tanks. With that in mind, I sincerely hope nothing goes wrong and that the attempt to catch the Super Heavy Booster is successful, paving the way for a new era in Starship development and the broader aerospace industry. In fact, there are good reasons to have confidence in SpaceX. Firstly, they nearly landed the booster in the ocean during Flight 3, even though it later exploded. In Flight 4, the booster successfully landed, although some issues with the engine remained. These two attempts suggest that SpaceX has gained considerable experience in navigating and ensuring engine stability throughout the flight. Even though a few engines failed in these flights, they generally performed well during startup and shutdown operations. Moreover, SpaceX has been continually upgrading the systems at the launch pad since Flight 4. They've modified the booster quick disconnect system and holding clamps on the orbital launch mount. The chopsticks have also undergone significant upgrades, including the replacement of actuators and various other system tests. Recently, SpaceX conducted successful tests involving the closing, opening, lifting, lowering, and rotating of the chopsticks using the B14.1 prototype. With these preparations, I believe we are on the brink of witnessing a significant milestone in the aerospace industry. As the launch date approaches, SpaceX still has some tasks to complete. The prototype tests need to be finalized, with S-30 and B-12 having completed their separate tests and preparations, as well as the wet dress rehearsal test still ahead. B-14.1 has been rolled back to the production site after completing the chopstick tests, 
so I expect S30 and B12 to be rolled to the launch pad soon, possibly this weekend or the next. Once these tests are completed, the final preparations will be made and all that remains is to wait for the launch date. In addition to these technical preparations, SpaceX also needs to coordinate with the FAA to secure launch authorization. Hopefully the FAA will soon provide updates on that. As the launch draws nearer, opinions may vary. Some will trust SpaceX, while others may remain skeptical. But I hope everyone will show their support by responding with the number 5 in the comments. Don't forget to like, share the video, and subscribe to our channel to stay updated on SpaceX's journey, especially the upcoming Starship Flight 5. Now, let's shift our focus to Europe, where we recently witnessed a failed static fire attempt by a German rocket company aspiring to compete with SpaceX. The company in question is Rocket Factory Augsburg, or RFA for short, headquartered in Augsburg, Germany. On August 19th, RFA conducted a static fire test with the first stage of their inaugural rocket at Saxevoort Spaceport, located in northern Shetland Island, UK. Unfortunately, things didn't go as planned. In a video released by the BBC, we can see one of the rocket's engines explode violently on one side during the venting process. The fire quickly spread upwards, engulfing the entire aft section of the first stage. Within seconds, the fire intensified, rushing upwards and producing thick black smoke. By the 25th second of the video, the entire prototype and test stand were consumed by flames. The video then cuts to the aftermath, showing the prototype completely burned and the test stand severely scorched. This was indeed a catastrophic test failure, and it marks a significant setback for RFA on their journey toward a successful first launch attempt. Following the incident, RFA posted a statement on X saying, On Monday evening, RFA conducted a hot fire of its first stage at their launch site at Saxevoort Spaceport. This resulted in an anomaly that led to the loss of the stage. Thankfully, the company also confirmed that no one was injured during the process, adding, The launch pad has been saved and is secured. The situation is under control and any immediate danger has been mitigated. RFA is now working closely with Saxevoort Spaceport and relevant authorities to gather data and determine what went wrong. They emphasized that they will take their time to thoroughly analyze and assess the situation. The first stage involved in this test was part of the R RFA-1 rocket, which stands 30 meters tall with a diameter of 2 meters and consists of three stages. From the video, it's evident that RFA has drawn significant inspiration from SpaceX, with the rocket's appearance resembling that of SpaceX's Super Heavy. The booster is equipped with nine engines powered by liquid oxygen and kerosene, similar to the Falcon 9. Additionally, RFA employs 3D printing technology in the construction of both the first and second stages with the goal of making the rocket reusable. Notably, RFA has been considered a front-runner among European startups aiming for an orbital launch. The recent static fire test was a follow-up to a successful test in May, during which the company fired four of the nine Helix engines. For the latest test, all nine engines were installed, while the second and third stages, having already completed testing, were awaiting launch at the spaceport. It's important to note that the stage used in this test was not a mere test article, but actual flight hardware intended for use on RFA's first orbital launch. This failure has caused an indefinite delay in their first orbital flights, which was previously scheduled for September. The company had planned to launch from the very site where this test took place, a launch pad designed to handle up to 30 orbital flights per year. Despite this setback, RFA remains confident, stating, We develop iteratively, iteratively with an emphasis on real testing. This is part of our philosophy, and we are and we were aware of the higher risks attached to this approach. Our goal is to return to regular operations as soon as possible. However, this incident underscores the immense challenges of rocket development. Many companies have attempted to emulate and surpass SpaceX only to encounter failures along the way. This serves as a stark reminder of SpaceX's unparalleled expertise and the difficulty of achieving similar success in the space industry. Meanwhile, SpaceX continues to solidify its position in the aerospace industry with yet another valuable satellite launch contract. This time, South Korea has signed an agreement with SpaceX to launch the GeoComp Sat 3 
multi-purpose communications satellite to geostationary orbit in the second half of 2027. GeoComSat-3, also known as Cholion-3, is a 3.7-ton satellite designed to replace the aging GeoComSat-1, which was launched in 2010. This advanced satellite will feature state-of-the-art payloads that serve multiple purposes, including communications, disaster prevention, maritime safety, and ensuring the safe flight of aircraft. The development of the Cholion-3 began in 2021 with a significant budget of 411.8 billion won, which approximates to 309 million US dollars. This contract further strengthens the collaboration between South Korea and SpaceX, which has been growing steadily over recent years. For instance, South Korea's first robotic lunar orbiter was successfully launched aboard a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket in August of 2022. Additionally, two of the five military reconnaissance satellites involved in the 425 project were launched on Falcon 9 rockets in December of 2023 and April of 2024. The remaining three satellites are also scheduled to launch on SpaceX vehicles through 2025. This latest deal underscores the reliability of SpaceX and its Falcon 9 rocket, further cementing their reputation in the global space industry. At this point, it's clear that SpaceX's capabilities make it exceedingly difficult for any competitor to match or surpass their achievements. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and as always, this has been Kevin from Great SpaceX. Until next time, keep looking up.